Hello, my name is Derek Kinder. I'm a hydrologic engineer with the Risk Management Center. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss flow frequency, specifically the analytical probability distribution. Again, I'd like to give recognition to the Hydrologic Engineering Center who produced many of the slides and figures we used in this presentation from their previous training classes. So we'll get started. Our learning objectives are to discuss distribution selection, describe distribution parameter estimation, which is part of calibration, We'll discuss st statistical parameters and evaluate verification. All right, so the form of apparent population's distribution is not known. So what distribution should we select to represent it? So once we select a distribution, the parameters of the parent population's distribution are not known, but we have to estimate them, usually from a pretty small sample. And that is considered calibration. So we're gonna look at a different example and how we would select a distribution. So this is a histogram of a 65-year period of peak annual inflows. Um, by examining the histogram as our first step, we can decide what distribution might be reasonable to represent this data. It's not completely symmetrical. You know, if we look at it, it has a little longer tail on the high side than the low side, but maybe it's close enough to symmetrical that we can start with a symmetrical probability um, density function. We'll proceed with assuming a normal distribution and fit it to the 65 member sample of flow volume. So that's what you see here. They put a normal distribution to represent that histogram. All right, so now let's discuss calibration or estimating the selected distribution's parameters. And we can estimate the parameters using sample statistics. So the central tendency determines where the PDF plots on the x-axis. The dispersion or spread determines the width of the PDF and the asymmetry define, determines if the PDF is symmetrical. Um, these description parameters are also known as the moments of the probability distribution and can be described as the location, scale, and shape parameters. Um, note for the recommended log Pearson type three distribution, which is recommended for flow frequency analysis, and many of you are familiar with, the location is the mean, the scale is the standard deviation, and the shape is the skew. And we'll discuss the LP3 distributions in more depth in later slides. So these next three slides will provide some background on how the parameters affect the distributions. Um, the mode, median, and mean are statistics of central tendency. Um, sample mean is also known as the expected value and is noted as X bar or another variable designation with a bar over it. So a change in the mean moves the PDF left on the x-axis for a lower mean or right on the x-axis for a higher mean. Standard deviation is the average distance from the sample mean. A change in standard deviation makes the PDF narrower for a smaller standard deviation or wider for a larger standard deviation. So values far from the mean, either above or below, have more influence on the statistics than values closer to the mean. So more values far above the mean than far below the mean will produce a positive sum, and more values far below will produce a negative sum. So a symmetrical sample will have a skew of zero because the distance above and below the mean are balanced. Values much larger than the mean produce a positive skew, shown as a longer upper tail in green here and values much smaller than the mean produce a negative skew shown as a long lower tail and a short upper tail. So we see in the pink here, our negative skew has the longer lower tail. Earlier slides showed the sample statistics and the parameters they estimate on the PDF form of the distribution or sample. This figure shows them on the frequency curve form, which is plotted as an exceedance or survivor fun function with the axis switch to put the variable on the vertical and the probability or frequency on the horizontal, like we're used to seeing for flow frequency analysis. So a change in the mean moves the frequency either, the curve either up or down. Does that make sense? Increase in mean, we go up, decrease in mean, we move our curve down. A larger standard deviation produces a steeper slope that spans a wider range of the variable on the vertical axis. A smaller standard deviation thus produces a smaller slope. And I think conceptually that makes sense. The steeper you are, the more y-axis you're covering. The less your slope, the less uh, y-axis you're covering. 
um, a normal distribution has a zero skew and plots as a straight line on a normal probability axis, like we have plotted right now. A positive skew produces an upward curvature as the long upper tail reaches higher vertically on the right, and a negative skew produces a downward curvature as the long lower tail reaches downward on the left, and the short upper tail pulls downward on the right. Um, as a mnemonic device, positive skew is happy and produces a smiling upper curvature, and a negative skew is sad and produces the frowning downward curvature. All right, so the blue PDF is the computed normal distribution compared to our sample histogram that we started with. How well do we think this distribution agrees with the data? So the question is, how, how does this normal PDF look as far as a representation of our observed histogram? Um, the sample statistics computed are the sample mean or X bar of 397, and the sample standard deviation is equal to 77. The analytical distribution plotted on the previous slide as a PDF can also be shown in the CDF form, plotted with the sample values against the plotting positions. Looking at this, now how well do we think this distribution agrees with the data? I mean, it looks pretty good to me, but we have better ways of looking at it. Now we're in the frequency curve form. So we've plotted the sample values versus the plotting positions. Now how well do we think the distribution agrees with the data? I mean, it looks like it's a pretty good fit, except for maybe these highest three points. Um, and maybe that's as expected because when we looked at the original histogram, we saw that longer upper tail on the right compared to the lower. All right, now we're going to talk about accounting for asymmetry. In this example, we assumed at the beginning a symmetrical probability density function, which results in a skew of zero. If we would have considered asymmetry, would the skew coefficient be positive or negative, do we think? Anybody? So again, we assumed a skew of zero to start with. That's why we have this straight blue line. I heard somebody say positive. Yeah, agree. Uh, because the longer upper tail, which we see fits much better through our highest um, event plotting positions. And again, remember positive skew results in an upward concave curvature or a smiling curve. All right, so in summary, we select a distribution and estimate the parameters of that distribution using sample statistics. We can then verify the parameters by computing the distribution and comparing to observed plotting positions. And remember, the location or mean for the LP3 moves the curve up and down. The scale or the standard deviation for the LP3 curve defines the slope of the curve. And the shape or the skew for the LP3 changes the curvature. And a skew of zero plots as a straight line in this log probability space. There's our learning recap. We talked about selecting a distribution, estimating the parameters of that distribution or calibration, discussing each of those statistical parameters and evaluating our selection or verification.